guys and welcome back to Project Z Garage. Today we continue working on the Audi Q3. We are going to be changing the front brakes and we're also going to be upgrading the brake pads. Now the brake pads that we're going to be installing today on the front are the Power Stop Evolution Sport. These are carbon fiber ceramic performance pads. Interesting. Now let's uh, open it up and see what comes in this kit. So it's giving you some information here on how to break in the new pads and rotors. First thing they show you when you open the box is the break in procedure. So you're going to be doing five moderate to aggressive stops from 40 miles per hour down to 10 miles per hour in rapid succession without letting the brakes cool. And, do not, and you're not going to come to a complete stop. And then you're going to do five moderate deceleration 35 to 5 miles per hour. Uh, also in succession and then you're going to drive slowly for a while for five minutes just so that the brakes cool down and that should be the break-in procedure for this let me get a little closer so in case you guys want to read it now let's see what else is in here we got the caps for the back of the rotor so it'll stop dust from getting in We've got, oh, the retainers. These are the retainer springs for each side. It comes with some ceramic silicone brake lube. So we're gonna put that on the surfaces. We're gonna put that on the surfaces right here that it shows. And then we have brake pads if you can get them out of here and if you guys are interested this is the part number it is super hot today and it feels like 100 degrees outside in the shade so I'm sweating so what we're going to do is, first thing off, we're going to be pulling the front wheels off. If you guys have an angle pick like this, or in the back in your toolkit, you'll, you'll have a piece of uh, angle, uh, piece of wire like this. It's a tool, and you're just going to put it in this hole here, and then slowly tap it out. Next, we're going to be pulling off our lug nuts. These are a 17 millimeter and we also have a lock on this so we got to go find the lock and then we'll work on taking those off. Alright guys so we got the wheel off now we got to work on getting the caliper bolts off. Now if you're going to change out the rotor, which I'm not going to do the front rotor this time for the fact that in a later video we're going to be doing an upgrade to that. So I'm going to save that for another video. Okay. I'm going to save that for another video. But if you're going to take the rotor off, you're going to have to take this, uh, I think this is a T30. Let's confirm that. Yes. So this retainer screw for the rotor is a T30 and you're going to have to take off these big bolts that hold the the, uh, the caliper mount on. Let me get the size for those and these are a 7mm uh, Allen head. That's what I'm going to be using to take those screws out. Alright guys, so this bolt here is a 21 millimeter. You got the top and that's the bottom there. And then you will take that off and then the rotor will come off. It might be kind of tight, so you might have to spray it down with some uh, penetrant fluid to get that off. But let's uh, continue working on getting this uh, caliper off. I'm going to set you guys up and get to it.
as you can see, these are pretty low. I mean, yeah, lower than I would like. <laughs> That's. I think it's. I think it's about time to change them. So we'll pop these off. We're gonna get some brake cleaner, spray everything down, make sure everything is clean, and then we'll work on reinstalling the the uh, well first. Sorry, please not thinking. We're gonna have to push the piston back into the caliper. I have a tool for that. Um, what you can do is open up the if it's really hard to press in. What you can do is open up the valve here and bleed some of the fluid out um, as you press in on the piston. Um, that also will allow you to get some of that dirty brake fluid by the caliper out, and then you can refill it up at the reservoir. So I think I'll do that uh, off camera once I'm done with everything, because uh, it does need it to get bled again and probably put some new fresh brake fluid in. But uh, it might be a good idea to do that if you haven't done it in a long time, is to open up this little uh, nipple here and as you're pushing in it'll probably put it'll push out the old brake fluid that's that's because the brake fluid usually just stays right here in the back of the piston and that's what's really getting all the heat uh, and uh, pressure and uh, pressed on it that's where all the where possibly if your seal is bad water and stuff uh, accumulates which is not good because that could damage your caliper but you know it's always good to flush your brake fluid every so often um, you know, this car definitely probably needs a brake flush. We got about 50,000 miles on it. And with the new upgrades that we're gonna be doing, we're probably gonna replace all this brake fluid with something more performance, uh, higher rated. All right, guys, let's get back to it. All right, guys. So we sprayed it down with some brake clean, make sure everything's nice and clean, wipe it out. And then we have this tool here, which We'll, you put it in here and it acts like like a cool press and it'll push the cal the caliper pistons back in. This is gonna be hard to do and, and one-handed. Let's see, rest it there. Let's see if we're on the right way. Ah, okay. So I was like, what's going on with this thing? at the same time and then what you do is this will ratchet once it gets tight you start pushing that piston back in I think if you go on Amazon I think that's where my, my cousin actually bought this for me it makes life so much easier than trying to use a clamp or something like that and slowly do it also check to make sure that your brake fluid is not going to overflow. Sorry for the shaking, I'm trying to hold it and do it at the same time. There you go. That is all the way down. Put this back up here. Alright guys, so now we're going to apply this to the back of the brake pads and these spots that they tell you to. Uh, this will help stuff from binding up and from, you know, sticking later on. It will allow the sliders to move, move smoothly and, um, you know, work properly. So that's really cool that they provided us with all of this so you don't have to go look for it or buy it 
Now, the one that has the clip in the back, that is gonna go into the piston side here. Now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a little bit I'll put a little bit around the pad too just for the hell of it also where it's sliding on we're gonna put a little there too put a little bit on the sliders too so we're gonna push the sliders out um, it came with new boots so you can pull the boots out and put new boots on um, so pull these out. these are the sliders you're gonna clean them up you could take like a brillo not a brillo pad but something clean them up really good I'm going to spray them down with some brake cleaner. Ooh. And we're going to push that back in where it belongs. Voila. Pull the other side out. Do the same. Usually like using my hand first to tread this on before we start using the ratchet. Right. And then we're gonna torque this at the very end. Um, I'll try to put the torque specs in the description because I don't have them on me right this second. But we're going to put everything together and then we'll get the torque specs. That looks good. Now what you're going to do is once you torque everything back, you're going to press the brakes a couple of times just uh, because now we've pushed the piston all the way back in so that first initial press of the brake is going to feel really soft because the piston is going to have to come to to uh, hit the to hit the uh, the brake pad so it's going to it might take a couple of pumps before you start getting like a firmer brake feel again um, then you know do your brake in procedure after you've done both sides be very careful double check your fluid level Make sure after you bleed it here, if you if you are gonna do the bleed procedure, you know, just to get some of that fluid out, um, to tighten this back, because the last thing you wanna do is driving with this open and then you're just pushing brake fluid out of here. Also, remember to put the cap back on. I gotta find where that fell off. Uh, we'll probably, I'll probably just do one more like quick cleaning here with the rag and some uh, brake, uh, brake uh, cleaner. And uh, this'll be good to go. Also remember to put back in your caps. Um, where your sliders are you don't this is to keep the dust and dirt out from there and and from gumming it up we also need to put on the new springs that came so these are the new springs let's grab one of those let's see if we can get this on because it was hell trying to get it on with one hand All right, guys. Uh, one thing I missed on the the other side, the passenger side doesn't have a sensor for the brake pads, but the driver side does. 
and with the new brake pads you can see that this one has it on and it's for the driver's side here's the uh, brake sensor right here you're gonna have to brake pull push down on this and then pull it out as you can see right there there's a little tab here and then if you get your finger on it or a little, a little screwdriver but be careful because you could break it it'll lift up as you can see and it'll, you see there's a little nub there that you're trying to get it over so just something a little different on the driver's side it doesn't have a sensor on both sides it only has a sensor on the driver's side or at least on my own it only has it on the driver's side and this is a 2015 audi q3 back to the 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 rest of the video so you guys can see how to finish this off i just wanted to show you that because it does we it doesn't show it in the other side when we're doing the passenger side All right guys, so I ended up going back to the stock spring that was on there. I kind of like the way it sits better than the other one. The other one looks like it's gonna fall off now. These seem to go a lot further in. Um, I might need to, you might need to like sand the, the edge down, the, the point of these down so that they fit in further and then these probably would work. But these, this just seems to work better and seeing that we're not gonna keep these on for too, too long, you know, cause we have another another upgrade we're going to be doing to the brakes so this is just temporary for now but uh that pretty much wraps up how to change the brakes if you wanted to change the rotor just do the extra two steps of taking the caliper bracket off with the 21 millimeter there's two top and bottom a t30 right here and then you might have to bang it but it'll probably pop off uh, with a little bit of persuasion uh, other than that, you're just going to follow the steps back, put the wheel back on. Um, I normally torque my wheels to about, mm, you know, 85, 90 pounds. I mean, that might be a lot for these cars. Check your owner's manual, get the right, the right amount of, uh, get the right torque settings for this. I will put in the description once I post this because I can't find it right now, uh, what I torque these to uh, on the back, but check the description. And guys, it is super hot. I am tired. Still got the other side to do. Um, I want to rush and get that done so that we can get this car uh, out of here. And, uh, well, actually not get it out of here, but we got to go and work on the rear too. And that's a little more complicated because it has the electric brakes. So until next time, guys, like, share, subscribe. Uh, hit the, hit, you know, do, do all those things. And we will catch you in the next video.